So I thought I'd post one last report before the holiday weekend hits us uh, because rates are actually moving a little bit right now in the right direction. And I want you guys to understand the whys behind it. So rates over there, you see it's down 0.01, so a hundredth of a percent. No, nothing to really write home about, but there's some context right here I want you guys to, to listen to and watch. But right through here, here's what's happening with mortgage rates. You can see the market kind of just plummeted at the beginning. I don't want to say plummet. It was down about 10 or 12 points at the beginning, and then it rallied all the way up to here. Uh, we're up seven basis points, and then the market closed. Markets closed at one o'clock, and then you had a, a reprieve right there. I think you know, some sellers. What you want to look through here also is every time you see one of these, uh, a bank reposted better rates. So if you're a mortgage advisor, I'd highly suggest MBS Live, you subscribe to the system, it's a lifesaver. So what I wanna to present to you guys today is right now is what, what the expectations are in regards to a, a recession, what the Fed's gonna do, because the number one question I get from everybody is, Dan, when's the rate, you know, when's the Fed gonna re reduce rates? And Dan, you don't know what you're talking about because every week you say something different. But I want you guys to get the context from this person right here in this interview. And then once it's done, it's only a couple minutes long, I'm gonna put it, a lot of it in context to you with a lot of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, couple of months, and couple of years. So without further ado, let's get over to it. Goldman is pushing back its prediction for the first rate cut to September from July, following some strong economic data this week. Our next guest remaining optimistic when it comes to the inflation outlook, leading him to predict two to three rate cuts this year. Joining us now, National Bureau of Economic Research Director John Lipsky. Uh, the NBER is officially responsible for calling a recession in the U.S. Uh, thank you for being here, John. Uh, are those cuts uh, predicated on any kind of official recessionary call or do you think they're coming no matter what? Not at all. First of all, I want to make clear, uh, the NBR has a business cycle dating committee. I'm not a member of that committee. It's all uh, independent academic experts that will examine this, the issue of timing of U.S. business cycle. But the important point is this, the overarching question, uh, question of importance to uh, investors and officials is whether the economy, current economy needs to slow to bring inflation down. And if that's the case or not, the qu second question is, is Federal Reserve policy poised accordingly or in, in, uh, accurately with regard to the inflation outlook? And so the most important thing is understanding where inflation is headed. And, that's been very difficult to forecast accurately over the last few years. Now, what, uh, what we've seen is in 23, early 23, last year, uh, the early months showed an acceleration of inflation that was, uh, that was subsequently reversed and the inflation rate slowed. The question, an open, important question, is that the case again this year? Because the surprises so far this year have been inflation rate, inflation figures that were a little stronger than expected. If there's good reason to to think that it's going, that inflation's going to recede, that is uh, opens the outlook for the economy and for Fed policy in a different way. Is that all you need, though? Do you just need inflation to recede, or do you need to see more significant deterioration in the labor market? If you would also pay attention to the charts coming up right through here, because it's nice how CNBC, as he's talking about specific things, they bring up charts. And then after this, there's some charts they didn't bring up. I'll bring up so I can put all this into context for you. Market as well. Well, that's an open question. But remember, prior to COVID, the economy was growing at a faster rate in general than at present. It, the uh, unemployment rate was similar to the current rate and inflation was a full percentage point or more lower than it is today. So the answer is not immediately obvious that, the, uh, that there needs to be a weakening in the employment market. And the, however, nonetheless, the latest data, which many have interpreted as strong, if you look at the implications for the labor market, you saw a, uh, a deterioration today in the uh, consumer confidence figures. Now that you, almost never provides independent information, it tracks uh, income trends. So it suggests that income growth is slowing. And if that's the case, and if we look at the, the uh, PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, that showed a deterioration in, in employment expectations, there's certainly reason to expect that the labor market is headed for slower growth in employment and perhaps some slower growth in income.
And that is an important implication, among other things, for Fed policy, if that's correct. John, I'm glad you brought up the notion of data because we do know the response rate to surveys has withered, some say collapsed. Yeah. We've seen weird uh, splits between household and establishment on the labor front. Don't get us started on LEI and its call for a recession <laughs> for a year. I just wonder, are there yeah. metrics that you relied on for years that you no longer rely on as much? <laughs> well, I, I, as I suggested in my early remarks, uh, absolutely important in understanding uh, basic trends in the economy is look at what's happening to real household disposable income. And we can see that that's growing at a relatively steady pace, but it looks like it's going to slow somewhat. And when we look at household finances, you can see that some of the excess cash balances that have built up over the, uh, in the COVID period are, uh, are essentially dissipated. At the same time, you want to look at housing markets which have been uh, uh, an important indicator. Uh, and we can see that they are certainly softening. There are other, some, some other danger signals at this time for the economy that I, I don't think are gonna derail uh, growth. But for example, commercial real estate is certainly uh, in, uh, in a very weak situation that'll have some impact on the financial markets. Big picture, there's every reason to think that growth actually could slow from here somewhat. There's no, there's no clear, obvious at this time, no obvious recessionary signs or anything close to it. Uh, but as I said, looking back to the pre-COVID period, we're in a, it's a situation which is not immediately obvious that we need further slowing in the economy uh, to get inflation down. And at the same time, the Fed says today that its policies are, are, are restrictive. So the question is, is that, is that going to prove to be appropriate for the coming months? So he said right at the end there, he said, is the policies restrictive? So how they, how they analyze that many times is they take the yield right through here uh, on the 10 year. So you're seeing that right through there and they add 1.5% to that. So if you do that with this, we'll just round it to 4.5 plus 1.5, it's 6%. So that's normally where rates would be in a normal market. But what you have right now is the anomaly of that. And then they also talked about the Federal Reserve, you know, when they're going to reduce rates. So there's still, it's all over the map on when that's going to take place. So here, this is actually the probability though of what they're going to do over the next few meetings, well, for, through the next year. And there's a probability, look, they just added this column in there today. I, I don't really know why, but five and a half to five, seven, five, there's, there's not even a point, there's not even a 1% chance of this happening. So the, the expectations are they're going to keep rates uh, higher for longer, right through here. And then you're starting to see in August and September, that's when the pendulum moves a little bit. So the analyst that was just on there, he's expecting two rate cuts, and that's most likely going to be in August and then September. I'm on the point of one or two rate cuts at 0.25 per. Okay, so that's what we have right there. So that's my report so far uh, that we have right now. I did post a video out there that I think a lot of you guys, if you're out there and you're first time home buyers, you need to watch this video. And I'm, I'm, I don't mean to hype it this much, but I show you behind the scenes on once you put in your application, what really takes place? How do we look at it? What do we look at? What do we monitor? Where you can get your rates, how to figure out interest rates, how, where you can get your credit reports so you can do a lot of this on your own because I want you to understand you know, the housing market, the real estate financing piece of the equation and everything else. So if you're in the market right now and you're, you're trying to kick the tires to say, you know, I, I'd love to buy a house. I'm just struggling. I don't know really which directions to take. I'd love to help you. My name is Dan Frio. I'm a licensed uh, mortgage advisor, loan officer. I'll put it that way. When I say mortgage advisor, a lot of people get confused on that. So I'm a loan officer licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. I'd love to help you navigate this scenario. So if you need some assistance with that, folks, please reach out to us. Uh, my, my website is therateupdate.com. And when you get there, please don't forget to check out the grant finder right up there. You're going to hit grant and you're going to see if there's a grant, if you're eligible for any grants that are 100% forgivable. And then the next step is to put in the application and get the, the, get the ball rolling. So I'd love to help you guys. Have a fantastic holiday weekend. Be safe. God bless. And I'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.